Hey guys, J.R. Raymond here back again. This time I'm coming to you from my son's room. I'm home for a couple of days before heading out to Indy for uh, the PBA event down there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the TOC and the Players' Championships and the struggles that have come along for these last couple of events. And also I want to announce the winner of the 5,000 subscriber uh, free bowling ball. So we're coming up on 10,000 here shortly. So stay tuned and we're going to get to it. We're going to actually skip over the TOC because I kind of talked a little bit about it before. Um, but congratulations, Jason Vomani, on his win. Uh, 10th major title, which puts him in the record books, uh, along with Pete and Earl, for most majors won. Um, and, and Belmo did it in such a quick time compared to the other two guys. So uh, congrats to him. Um, certainly one of the best bowlers in the world, uh, if not the best right now. Uh, and he's the guy we're kind of chasing. Um, me, I'm just chasing cuts because right now uh, I'm not making a whole lot of them. We've bowled a few events now. TOC didn't go very well. I mean, it went okay. I bowled okay. Didn't get through the qualifier because of a couple of bad games, made some bad decisions. Practiced throughout uh, the couple of days that I missed, and things were looking good, throwing the ball really well. Got into practice session for the, the Players' Championship, and I noticed right away there was an issue. Um, and the issue being uh, I was going to be mentally out of it because of seeing my ball hook so quick and then basically back up and push the rest of the way down the lane. Uh, so a lot of my shots from during practice, I was looking at, they were hooking immediately, kind of wiggling, hooking again, and then hooking again. And it was like, you ever watch your ball hook as soon as it hits the lane and then kind of backs up and then hooks again. And it's just, it's not a very good ball reaction. That's not what you want. That, that's kind of been my issue. And what happens is, it happened through the entire, all, all three blocks really. So the first two blocks, the first block, I started with 173. And I actually bowled a pretty good game. It got to the point where it was just wrap 10, strike, wrap 10, strike. And then I get back up on that lane and blow her 710. Um, and you get a little bit frustrated, so you start chasing. And I looked at the scores, and there was like 35 guys or so that shot 240 or better. So I'm like, okay, well, 173 puts me well behind the number. I need to start looking for some, uh, looking for some numbers. And that's, that's the first mistake, rookie mistake on my part was looking at the scoreboard and thinking I needed to go chasing a bunch of numbers because at the end of the day, you look at it, it only took 200 and what, 214 a game to cash and 215 a game to make max play. That's really not high scoring at all. Um, even on my worst days, I should be able to grind that out. But instead, I made the decision to start chasing ball reaction, looking for 240 every game. And that just, uh, it cost me, cost me dearly. So First day, I, uh, I went 170, started chasing, bowled 220, 220, looked okay, got to a good spot, and then all of a sudden, once you start getting past a certain area on the lane, and for the way that pattern played, it was about 35, 36. On the left, you start getting too far left, and the volume goes down on the left side. That's why a lot of lefties struggled a little bit this week, is because uh, the way they were shaped on the left side were really, really flat. And as the right-handers got into that zone, the only chance you had was to throw the ball over that spot. Uh, because if you set it down early like I do, um, the ball tends to hit and try to check up on you a little bit quick, and then you try to get it to fall back. So it's really, really hard to play those types of angles when, you're, uh, when your ball is, is hooking at your toes and then you're trying to get it to go into a certain direction. So generally what happens is you, you know, you, you do something like that and you four pin and you're like, okay, I'm going to make a little bit of move off that. You make a small move like a two and one or a one and one to the left and uh, it hooks again, but then, you know, it starts going right and then it just hydroplanes and then you end up two pinning or two ten or something like that. So it's, it's really hard to make a decision on what to do um, because I, like for me, I, I've made a post. If anybody's friends with me on Facebook, you saw I posted a phone booth. I, I mean, I literally felt like I was bowling in a phone booth because every move I made just seemed to be the wrong move. Uh, so basically, you feel like you're in jail. You make a little bit of a move to the left and your ball never hooks. You make a little bit of move back to the right and your ball hooks early even more. You know, And as you go left, it's flatter and flatter, so your ball hooks sooner and sooner. So the only option really seemed that you had to go over the fronts uh, or find a way to get your tilt super high and uh, just really, really be soft at the bottom. 
So going into day two, I knew I needed a score. I thought I needed, again, looking at the scoreboard, I'm looking at everything the wrong way already. Uh, I was right around even, like 10 under, um, and 24th was about 100 over. So I'm like, okay, I just need 200 over and I'm good. Very, very doable. I'm looking for 200 over ball reaction instead. If I would have just bowled maybe even 100 over, I give myself a chance because the scores didn't go up much that second day. If anything, they stayed relatively close. Um, so I screwed up again by looking at the scoreboard. So if anybody's paying attention to this, don't look at the scoreboard. Just work your own, play your own game, do what you got to do to score the best all the time, and you'll be fine. Just get that grind game going, make good shots, control the pocket, make your spares. And just make the moves you know to move. If you if you do that and you pay close attention to yourself, you know you'll be there at the end of the day. Um, and that's the mistake that I made this week was just not really focusing on myself. I was more focusing on chasing scores than just making quality shots and quality changes. I, I let myself get frustrated too quick uh, searching for these ball reactions because my ball was hooking so early all the time. I couldn't quite figure out how to get it through. So my second day was just... It was awful because I'm searching for so much. I couldn't figure anything out. Uh, so the third day, finally, I just, once I'm already pretty much out of it, I needed like 350 over, which really wasn't out there um, the third day. So I just kind of went in just looking to learn, try to figure out a way to get my ball through the front. So uh, the one thing that did work for me the third day, I, I bowled a couple of good games. I started with two team that could have been better, um, was you know basically literally feeling like I was pushing my fingers to the back side of the hole and my thumb the opposite way. So it was like I was I was doing this the entire way, just trying to just get my palm all the way up and just don't touch the finger holes at all and don't grab with your thumb at all and just let it float through the front. And it did work pretty well, actually. The game three, uh, I mean, I bowled, what, maybe it was game four. I went like two teen, um, tried moving left game two to see if I could float it through, bowl 140 or 170, and then the next game 170. And... Uh, Finally, I grabbed a different ball, moved way left up against the ball return and did that same thing, but then turned my hand this way to get my tilt to go up and my rotation to go up a little bit. And I was able to float it through there really well. And I had the front nine, um, bowled 278. But then uh, game five and six, I got forced even further left into that spot I was talking about, the flat part. And I'm, I got to get better at just throwing it over it or something. I got to do some practice with that. It's the only way I can compete is to be able to throw it over. And the problem is, is you can't throw it over it and grab at it a ton um, because, you know, your ball's just going to hook off the back end of the pattern like crazy and you're not going to be able to control it very well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and announce the winner for the uh, free bowling ball for the 5,000 subscribers. All right, so here we go. The winner of the 5,000 subscriber ball of choice is going to be Jimmy Flantroy. I think I said that right. Maybe not. Either way, uh, I posted a picture here with the, uh, with the subscribers page, basically. So if this is you, send me an email at uh, betterbowlingfitness at gmail.com, and we will get you a ball ordered and sent your way. Uh, we just need to get your info and we'll be good to go. But congratulations. Thank you for following and thank you for subscribing. Uh, for those who are just now seeing this, I'm doing this again at 10,000 subscribers. So uh, just under, I think, 1,800 or 1,700 subscribers to go to 10,000. So we'll get there real soon. And for every 100,000 views that that other video shows uh, gets, which I'll actually I'll post it up over here. Or maybe it's over here. I don't remember. Um, but that video, it, once it gets to 100,000 views, we'll give away another ball for every time it gets there. So keep sharing, keep, uh, keep following, and we will get going with some more videos. Uh, coming up soon, we're going to be doing another episode of Breaking Down the Pros. Um, I'm not sure who I'm going to do yet, but I've got some videos lined up uh, that we can talk about some of the best bowlers in the world and some of the things they might be able to do a little bit better. So stay tuned, and until next time, we will see you guys later. Congratulations. Yep.